go on next. So the next yes, question. Uh, and we're moving on to borders. What is your position regarding protecting the U.S. border from illegal aliens and guns? Okay. Uh, again, as uh, as the proud grandson of an immigrant, and my great grandmother and great and my grandmother came here. I am proud. We are mostly a nation of immigrants, but legal immigrants. Keep people that came in, like my grandmother and, and uh, my great grandmother. And their names are etched in the walls at Ellis Island, and I support that. The United States admits more immigrants to its country than any other country in the world. A million, over a million a year. But illegal, illegal immigration is a problem, and you don't have a country if you're not going to secure your border. Just like you, just like you lock your home at night. You don't let people just wander in and out of your home, and we can't let people wander in and out of our country without knowing what their intentions are. Not only that, not only that, and many of the people that come here seek a better life and really have no ill intent to anybody in this country or the country they came from. They are seeking, uh, they, are, they are fleeing horrific circumstances, but not everybody is that way. We've got gang members from MS-13 that have come to this country. We are bringing in a horrific amount of fentanyl that goes through China and comes through our southern border enough every single month, every single month to kill the entire population of the United States. And then there's the weapons trafficking and other drug, drug trafficking. I support a legal uh, immigration effort for our country. I voted as such. I voted for the bill that got 195 votes in the House. And, uh, and I think it's something that the House and the, and the Senate, the Congress in general, need to sorely get after it. It's been too long where our immigration problem has been broken and is left unaddressed. So we certainly can and must secure our borders. And we do need comprehensive immigration reform. It's been uh, since the 1980s that we really had anything of real substance. But there's a way to secure the borders and do it compassionately. And tearing children away from families, even families that are crossing um, without proper documentation is not the way to do that. We can enforce our border security in a humane manner. And then for those who are here under programs such as DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival, we need to find a way to citizenship for these folks. These are people that have been in our nation oftentimes for, for now decades, who came not as a result of their decision, but as a result of the decision of their parents, and who have become the citizens that we all want to be, people who have graduated our schools, started businesses, served in our military. So yes, um, immigration is essential to who we are. It's we are all immigrants. Uh, my mom was an immigrant. Uh, my father was an immigrant going back generations. But it's what makes our nation strong. And there's a way to do it that, frankly, doesn't focus on false news. The rate of crime amongst immigrants, both legal and illegal, is lower than the rate of crime amongst the population as a whole. So let's focus the issue on what really is going on here, which is we need to find a way to deal with the problem that we have of undocumented immigrants, but we need to do it humanely. Okay, thank you. George, you're gonna go uh, answer this question next. We're gonna stay on immigration, but something we really don't hear much about. We're gonna flip the coin on its head. And uh, with unemployment at 3.9%, which historically is considered full employment. And baby boomers retiring at a record pace, 300,000 turn 65 every month. What is being or should be done with legal immigration to fill the coming shortfall in available employees? So that's a great question. I think that's one that we often miss, particularly under the current administration. There's this knee-jerk reaction that all immigration is somehow bad. And, and, and that's, of course, not the case. We all know that all immigration is not bad. And then, in fact, with our economy being at or near full employment, we do need to increase the workforce. And so immigrants are a vital source for businesses. There are businesses within South Central Pennsylvania, right here within the 10th Congressional District, that frankly could not do what they do without immigrant labor. We see that particularly in agriculture, but we also see that in other industries. So we've got to figure out a way to, I would say, streamline immigration. And that gets back to the issue of comprehensive immigration reform. And if we're going to do that, and that, that fix is going to last, it needs to be a bipartisan solution. That's what I will pursue once elected, is bipartisan solutions. Because bipartisan solutions, particularly to tough, complex issues like immigration, those are solutions that are going to endure. And we need to make sure that we are finding a way to bring in the people that we need to allow our economy to grow and prosper in the decades to come. 
I've long said since I was elected that our immigration system is broken and you don't have to go too far to see that it is. Uh, we have a strong ag community in York County and uh, particularly the 4th Congressional District which also includes Adams County and I've been an advocate for a three year ag visa. There's no reason why, uh, why an employer has no idea who's coming or whether the individual is coming from another country who just wants to come up for a temporary period of time and work has no idea whether they're going to make it. Neither one knows whether they're going to, the immigrant doesn't make it, the, the employer doesn't know whether that person's going to make it. And so that system is broken for a long time. In the bill that I voted for, we moved to a merit-based system because there are other problems with our immigration system, which include the fact that we import, whether legally or illegally, too much low-skilled labor. We need a certain amount, but remember that takes jobs away from your child. When I started working picking fruit at 13, the only skill I had was to show up on time with a good attitude, right? And so when you don't have any skills, this is a place where you can get your start. And if we're importing a lot of this labor, then that takes our folks out of the labor force. As well, uh, we could reduce the country caps. Literally, we have people on different visa programs in our country that have been here for dozens and dozens of years and decades who can't become, they can't become citizens. They have to continue to work at the same location and, uh, and they can't start a business of their own. They, they have no uh, mobility in, in, in their employment because of the, the country caps and the problems we have with that. Those are issues that we sought to resolve. That's the bill I voted for. I've been trying to be part of the solution. We just came to get the rest of Congress there. Okay, thank you. Scott, you're gonna answer first on this yes, next sir. one.